Welcome to SI Now, I'm Robin Lundberg. Of course, we are a sports show and we have plenty to get to, but sometimes events outside the sports world affect all of us. And that was the case yesterday following another school shooting, this time in Parkland, Florida. Before last night's Warriors Blazers game, Warriors coach Steve Kerr responded to the tragedy. Well, nothing has been done. Um, it doesn't seem to matter uh, to our government um, that children are being shot to death uh, day after day in schools. It doesn't matter that people are being shot um, at a concert, at a movie theater. It's not enough, apparently, to move uh, our leadership, our government, the people who are running this country uh, to actually do anything. And that's demoralizing. It's always difficult to transition from something like that back into the action on the court. But even as Kerr's mind, like so many of ours, was on the terrible events in Florida, his team did have a game to play. And the Warriors continued their malaise heading into the All-Star break, falling 123-117 to Portland. Kevin Durant scored 50 points for Golden State, but he was nearly equaled in that department by Damian Lillard, who dropped 44 for the Blazers, which makes him our adrenaline performer, presented by Toyota. Lillard saved his best for last, putting in 18 fourth quarter points. Dame added eight assists, and Portland was plus 17 with him on the court, while his counterpart, Steph Curry, struggled, totaling just 17 points on six of 17 from the field. So, of course, Damian Lillard getting the best of that matchup. We now welcome in our showrunner, Ben Teitelbaum, to do a little hot take, smart take, starting with the Warriors. Yes, Robin, very excited. We all know how this works. I give a hot take, not necessarily something I believe, must say that right up front, but something the sports world's kind of bantering about. You tell me if it's hot or smart. So I say this under protest, <laughs> but people are talking about it. The Warriors, just four and four in their last eight games, they will not win the NBA championship. Well, I won't say that that's a smart take, but it's not as hot as it was. And this is coming from a guy who has said they're unbeatable, a mutant super team, they've broken the NBA, all those things. But it has at least opened up the possibility. We can think about it, right? You got the new look Cavs. You've got the Rockets in the Western Conference. And there's just the idea that the Warriors have been there so many times. They're getting tired of each other. They're going through a funk. I have to remind myself that it's February and that we're heading into the All-Star break and that we've seen teams like the 2001 Lakers struggle during the regular season and then go 15-1 and one in the postseason. So I'm not ready to sit here and tell you the Warriors won't win the championship, but I like the idea that we can at least contemplate it. That's kind of fun. Let's move over to the East now, the Raptors. Best record in the conference, 41-16. and 16. They've won seven straight games, six of those by double digits. And they have the second best point differential in the whole league, better than even those Warriors. Here's the hot take. The Raptors from Toronto are the definitive favorites to win the East. That is definitely a hot take. Uh, look, the Raptors are very good, and I actually think they're better than the Boston Celtics. If you had asked me this question literally one week ago, I would say that's probably correct because I didn't think it was the Cavs and the Raptors have surpassed the Celtics with their bench, with their young core added to Lowry and DeRozan, and with the Celtics' struggles. But I can't pick the Raptors over the Cavs when just last year in the postseason, DeMar DeRozan was saying things like, hey, if we had LeBron James, we would have won. And Kyle Lowry was saying, you know, me and, and DeMar, we're not on LeBron's level. You know that LeBron is in their heads and the, the new look Cavs to me are clearly the, the favorites in the East, though Toronto, a very good basketball team. Let's talk about moving from a team to a guy. I know you like him, Robin. His name is Dwayne Wade. And in a conversation recently with ESPN's Jorge Sedano, Dwayne Wade said he does not want a Kobe Bryant-esque farewell tour. Here's the quote. I'm not a narcissist like that. I don't think I need it. I'm not calling Kobe a narcissist. He earned it and needed that. But I can't set out and say I want a farewell tour like Kobe Bryant. That's not who I am. But let me tell you something, Robin, and this one I actually do believe in. Even if Dwayne Wade wanted a Kobe Bryant farewell tour, he doesn't deserve one. Go. Smart take-ish. 
De deserve one is, is where I struggle with it a little bit because Dwayne Wade, the third best shooting guard of all time. And in fact, I could argue peak Wade was better than peak Kobe. But if we're going farewell tours, that is reserved for the great of the greats. And, you know, when you're talking about Kobe, his career was better than Dwayne Wade's. And you sort of sully those farewell tours. If I don't want to say you give them to anyone because Wade is probably deserving, but he's right at that cutoff line. You know, we saw Derek Jeter in baseball. We saw Kobe Bryant. You have to get to that kind of level so it would seem um, it would sully Wade's career in a sense because we'd wind up having the debate on whether he deserves a farewell tour when that took place and his career does deserve to be recognized for what it was when he was in his prime. Well let me ask you this had he stayed on Miami would there be a different case I think staying with one team changes this equation how's he getting received in Chicago in Cleveland does that matter to you yeah I think it does matter because Wade I just mentioned how good he was at, at his prime spectacular in that 2006 NBA Finals you know excellent during that that heat run of course but at the back end of that heat run he fell off and then his career went downward after that so it wasn't just that he wasn't on the heat it was that he struggled since then plus he hasn't exactly been the best presence to locker rooms from everything that, that we've gotten I'm glad he's back to finish his career in Miami but it does hurt his case a little bit how poor he went out in Chicago in Cleveland even if Kobe went out poorly himself at least he did it with Los Angeles six how many points he scored 60 points that was well not not out at the final shots. I'm talking about like the last three years not the, not the last game the last game you know you got to recognize <laughs> fair enough final one for you it's a fun one you see the Uncle Drew trailer, Robin? The Kyrie Irving based feature length movie that's Wait, coming out this summer? Did you say feature length? Yes. Okay. Uncle Drew, he's coming. And here's my hot take it'll be the best movie of 2018. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, a scalding hot take. Would burn off the, the gray facial hair from <laughs> Uncle Drew. Um, you know what? It's kind of, I like the commercials, and I saw Thunderstruck on TV recently, and it wasn't the worst thing I'd ever seen. So I was like sort of prepared for it to be the worst thing I'd ever seen, and expectation, you know, lowered expectations can really change the, the way you look at something. So if you go into the Uncle Drew film with your expectations as low as possible, you might, coming out, you might come out saying it's not the worst movie of 2018, but I don't think you'd go to the best movie of 2018. Let me tell you one thing. Our colleague, producer Gene Sherry, he's seen that no less than five times in the theaters. I can promise you that. Well, Gene, um, that's a mistake. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's day seven at the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. Here's who won, what made news, and which events you should watch. Michaela Schifrin finally made her Olympic debut and won gold in giant slalom. She finished fifth in that event four years ago. In women's hockey, Canada beat USA in prelim play 2-1 to one in what many believe was a preview of the gold medal matchup. At age 35, Norwegian Axel Lundsvindel became the oldest gold medalist ever in alpine skiing, winning the men's downhill. In a strange turn of events, Jamaican women's bobsleigh coach Sandra Kiriasis quit unexpectedly after a dispute over her role with the team and ownership of the team's sled. Tonight in primetime, American Nathan Chen begins his quest for gold in men's single skate. Michaela Schifrin performs her first run of women's slalom in search of a second gold medal. And USA men's hockey looks to rebound against Slovakia after blowing a 2-0 lead against Slovenia in an overtime loss. We now welcome in Planet Football's Luis Miguel Echegaray to go over the Champions League. Real Madrid PSG, Real wins 3-1, to one, scoring two late goals, but PSG's CEO blamed the referee for some decisions he felt didn't go his team's way. Did Real get lucky with the result? No, no, they didn't get lucky. I actually saw this game in three stages. I thought that the very first part was very uncomfortable for both teams. Uh, both were equally uh, a little nervous, I guess, uh, the expectations of such a big encounter. And it wasn't until the second stage when um, Sedan in the second half replaced Gareth Bell. He, uh, he put in Gareth Bell for Benzema and uh, Unai Emery, PSG coach, had no answer to that. And the third one later was when... Uh, Asensio came on and he really, really delivered uh, for Real Madrid. I thought Real Madrid played a good game. I thought it was uncomfortable from both sides, but I don't think they got lucky. I think it was just a, a result of PSG not being ready for the big occasion. In the other big name match, Juventus seized control of the game early, going up 2-0 over Tottenham. Yet Tottenham still managed to come back on the road and pull the score even. 
Is this a sign that Tottenham's ready to challenge for the Champions League title? I mean, listen, why not, right? I mean, earlier this week in Planet Football, I said that one of the great things about the Champions League is that we have such a diversity in tactical management, so many great coaches adapting and imposing their philosophies uh, with other teams. Mauricio Pochettino is one of those prime managers. He really enjoys the big occasion just because of his high-press, altitude kind of game. I thought that Juventus actually took their foot off the pedal after they were 2 nothing up. We actually saw... Uh, in Iguain's career in, in the entire game. He played great at the beginning, missed the penalty, wasn't able to deliver later on in the game, and uh, Tottenham took advantage. Now they come into a great chance to go back to Wembley and really take over. Listen, they have Christian Eriksen, who in my mind is one of the best, if not the best midfielder right now. Both Liverpool and Man City came into their prospective matches, clear favorites against their opponents, both dominated. Should we be more impressed with Liverpool or Man City? Well, we all know what Manchester City can do with Pep Guardiola's team, both in the Premier League, um, in cup situations, and now in the Champions League. Uh, let's not take anything away from them. But with all due respect to Basel, um, the Swiss champions, they're not um, exactly the highest uh, opponent that Man City can face. It was a great performance, but, you know, let's remember that it was Basel. Now, Liverpool played the Portuguese champions, Porto, and they didn't just win they completely destroyed them. Um, Mohamed Salah, Roberto Firmino, and Mane finally can figure out how to work each other. I think Coutinho's departure is a blessing in disguise because of the collective unity that they have going up. And it, it was proven yesterday. Now, remember, Porto didn't have uh, Abukabar, who was one of their most dangerous weapons. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when they go back to Anfield. But this was an incredible performance by Liverpool, and they're on a roll right now. Luis Miguel Echegaray of Planet Football, thanks for the time this morning. Thank you so much, Robin. Now, She's an Olympic gold medalist, the second most decorated American gymnast of all time, and a 2018 SI swim athlete. Allie Raceman, thank you so much for joining us Hi, today. thank you for having me. You had quite the shoot this year. It was your second shoot as part of SI swim. You shot in Aruba, and you also did the unique project in her own words. What was the biggest difference for you going into your second year as opposed to your rookie year? <laughs> You know, I feel like being a part of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit, it's really unlike anything I've ever done. Um, and I was so excited to be asked to be a part of the, the 2018 issue again. And then when I heard about the In Her Own Words project, I mean, it just is such an incredible concept, something I've never done before. And um, the swim and the In Her Own Words concept, they're so different. And so to be able to be a part of both of them is was really, really cool. I put a lot of thought into the words that I wanted to put on my body, where I wanted to place them. Um, and, you know, I truly believe that it, it sends a really important message that women do not have to be modest, be respected. I think this year is extra special for me um, because I, I want people to understand you can be sexy, you can wear whatever you want, and you can still be powerful, you can still have a voice, you can still advocate for change. And, um, you can still be a good person and you can still be respected no matter what you're wearing. And, um, you know, a lot of people are supportive of that, but there are still people out there that don't understand that. And I think it's important to further the conversation and to talk about it so that hopefully we can get to a point where everyone understands that abuse is never okay, which is also something that I put on my body. Right. I mean, you mentioned that you had survivor as kind of the most prominent word that you chose across your chest. To be able to kind of use your voice and speak on this platform and use SI Swim to do that, I mean, wh what does that mean to you? Well, you know, Sports Illustrated Swimsuit has a very, very big platform, you know, and it was scary to come forward, and it still is. There are still people out there that do victim shame. I decided to put the word survivor across my chest because I want to change the way that people view survivors of uh, any kind of abuse because I think everyone is a survivor of something. We've all been through something really tough. We've all been through something traumatic. Our society is one of those where it's, it's hard to talk about uncomfortable things, and we live in the social media world where everyone wants their life to seem perfect. And um, every day I cope with this differently. Um, and I think the more we talk about it, the more we can help each other out. But I don't want anyone to be afraid to come forward like I and so many others were. I hope the next generation, first of all, I hope the next generation never has to say the words me too. Right. But um, I don't want anyone to be ashamed of something tough that they've been through. It's not fun, it's not easy, but 
it makes us into who we are. And I think what helps me is focusing on the person I am today rather than the traumatic abuse that I went through. There are some people that in general look at SI Swim and say, mm, this is not a great platform. What would you say to those critics? You know, especially for In Her Own Words, when you are naked, I knew there were gonna be people that were not happy about it, but it's something that I believe in. I really believe that it's our bodies. I'm proud of my body. I think as a woman, we're taught to um, be ashamed of how we look and it's better to cover up because if you don't cover up, you're at risk of being abused or you're at risk of being attacked and we have to change that. It just, it really bothers me when, when someone's brave enough to share their story about being sexually abused and someone says, well, what were you wearing? And, and it doesn't matter yeah. what they were wearing. It's, yeah. it, it's just, it's really a big problem in our society. The victim shaming has to stop. And, you know, I think that um, SI, you know, every year they're getting more and more diverse. They're they're adding in, you know, different body types, different people with different stories. And I think it's I think I'm, it's really great, and I'm really proud to be a part of it. What was this whole experience like? What was mm -hmm. the most memorable moment on set for you? When I shot in Aruba, we get up at like four o'clock in the morning and you get your hair and makeup done, but it doesn't feel like it's that early because you're just so excited. You feel like a little kid. You can't wait to be at the beach and we were trying to go for Wonder Woman vibes and um, the okay. athletes got to do that. And um, I was on this like really big rock that was slanted and, and I felt like I was gonna fall off, but oh it was when, you know, the sun was rising. It was really beautiful. It was really cool. It felt really empowering. I felt really strong. It was kind of a moment where it shifted and um, I said, you know, I'm like, this is really cool, this is really powerful, and, and I want people to know I did it for myself. We can all do whatever we wanna do. It's our bodies, my body's been through a lot, and I can be proud of yeah. this body inside and out. Absolutely, now you've also started working with the lingerie and apparel company, Aerie. Mm -hmm. um, why is this a good partnership for you? I love working with Aerie because they're so supportive of of young girls, of women. Um, they work a lot with helping girls with body image um, and helping them be confident and comfortable in their own skin. Uh, they don't retouch anything. Um, I think society puts an unrealistic expectation on all of us, men and women, to be perfect. And I think it's really great that Ari is breaking those stereotypes. I think it's important to be honest with everyone, you know, I don't wake up every morning and think my body looks perfect. I don't think right. anyone does. And if they do, I'd like to know the secret. Same, right. Um, but I think that's important is to talk about it. Of Even though I've been in Airy um, campaign, I've done Sports Illustrated swimsuit, um, I've competed at the Olympics, I'm, I know my body's not perfect. No one's body's perfect, right. and that's okay. Allie Raceman, thank you so much for taking the thank time you. today. And congratulations on your second SI thank swim you. appearance. Our Sports Illustrated 2018 SI Swimsuit cover model, Danielle yes. Harrington, is in studio today. Danielle, thanks for joining us. Of course. Now, it is your second appearance in SI Swim, but yes. your first on the cover, a huge honor. Oh God, yes. We had a little privilege of seeing behind the scenes of how you found out about that. Yes. Um, it, was, it was pretty exciting. We want to show you this video and have you kind of narrate to us, like, what happened okay. here. So what's going on here? You're so walking in. I'm walking in. in and they made, made it seem like I'm walking in on Tyra set. And I'm like, oh no. I was like, <laughs> kind of going back, I'm like, MJ, like, what are we doing? But like, you <laughs> were really excited to meet her too, right? I was, I mean, that's my idol, but I thought we were crashing her set, because she was like, what's going on? She was and pretty was welcoming like, though, right? Yeah, but it was like a joke, because, mm -hmm. you know, she was gonna surprise me with the, po the with the cover, but, did you have any idea at this point, I'm like, like, what was going on? Like, when you walked in there thinking you had a photo shoot, and here she's got this, what, what's going through your mind now? You're like, what is she showing I'm like, me? Yeah, and she's like, oh, I have a special project. And then she's like... And she did the America's Next Top yeah. Model speech and then she here, goes, too. Right there, she said, I have one photo in my hand. Is that when you knew yes. right there, when yeah. you put your head yeah. back? You're like, oh, here it is. <laughs> she didn't even show me yet. You're like, this is happening. Uh. <laughs> That's oh, so adorable. That's God. like that raw the best moment. emotion. How does it feel for you seeing that too? Uh, I have the same emotions. Like, oh, it was the best feeling. I mean, I couldn't believe Tyra was there. I wasn't even looking at him. I was like, can I just hug you? Yeah. Like, oh, it, it was the best 
thing. Like, finding out, feeling. finding out you're on the cover of SI Swim, and finding out from your idol yes. Tyra Banks. That's like Ugh. the perfect storm, right? Yeah. The best thing. That's incredible. Yeah. I think. I mean, that was a perfect moment. We had we had a lot of fun watching that as well. Look at this. This emotions. Oh, Everyone's my so God. proud. <laughs> <laughs> and the cover was great too. It was too. so what good. You think of the it cover? Was, I loved it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a beautiful yeah. shot. Mm -hmm. You shot in the Bahamas. What was that like for you? The shoot itself was so much fun. I shot with Ben Watts, and he's just so much fun. And he just kind of lets you be yourself and just like frolic around. And he had the best music. And the theme was like '90s, like '80s, '90s vibes. Uh -huh. So he spent all the good '90s music that I love. The so. throwbacks. The yeah. throwbacks. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what it was, was just. The, what was the go-to song? Like, what was your favorite moment? You're like, <laughs> I, I just remember. Jam. I just remember I Believe I Can Fly. Like, they oh played it like three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> they played it so much, but oh, it was just so much fun. It didn't feel like a shoot. It didn't feel like, it just felt like a vacation. Yeah, a vacation. Yeah. You're out in the Bahamas. Just with friends, you know? It didn't friends. feel like work or, you know, I didn't feel. Yeah. I felt, it was so much fun. And there's a lot of camaraderie, it seems. A little bit of a sisterhood with the SI definitely. Swim girls. I mean, do you have these bonds or these friendships forming over? over yeah, years? definitely. Um, and I think it's really important to have that because, you know, we all want to see each other do well we all support each other no matter what you know mm -hmm. do you have a favorite picture from the shoot um yes my favorite picture it's in the magazine it's the last picture on the last page okay it's like me I'm kind of all like twisted up you gotta check it out how hard was that pose though <laughs> oh kind of hard but it was like a workout kind of yeah I feel like, like the my... hardest poses so they're like sitting there like yeah like you're like okay? holding yourself up like <laughs> <laughs> but then it works. Sexy. And it works and crushed it. Yeah. SI Swim on newsstands now. Yes. This girl on the cover. Congratulations, Danielle. Thank Hampton. you Thanks so, so much for much. joining us. Of course. That'll do it for today's SI Now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to send your comments in on Facebook and Twitter. We'll be back tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, in the meantime, you can check out at SI Now Live on Twitter for the latest videos and updates.